The luck of the draw, a school board seat decided by pulling a name out of a hat. Plus, Columbia Regional Airport arrivals and departures are taking off. And while other lawmakers face criticism for avoiding constituents, Senator Claire McCaskill goes to a town hall in Fulton and faces criticism of her own. KOMU 8 News at 9 starts now. After hundreds of votes, the Southern Boone County School Board's third seat was still up for grabs. Good evening, I'm Brittany Keeper. And I'm Jim Wright. Thanks for joining us. After tying in the election last Tuesday, Price Nichols and George Carney broke the tie by, what else, picking names out of a hat. KOMU 8's Mackenzie Huck is here in the studio to tell us about an interesting tie-breaking day in Ashland. Well, it all came down to drawing a name out of a hat. Price Nichols defeated George Carney for the third open seat on the Southern Boone County School Board when his name was drawn. In last week's election, Carney and Nichols each received 329 votes. Both candidates declined to hold a runoff election, so per Missouri statute, they had to draw lots. Nichols and Carney said there'll be no bad blood between the two after this. So I'm happy that I won. I mean, that's why we're here. So I'm sorry to see George go. But yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed I didn't get my name drawn, but, you know, you have a 50-50 chance, so. Nichols says he's excited to begin his fourth year on the school board. He says first on his agenda, working on school budgets. Reporting in the studio, Mackenzie Huck, KOMU 8 News. Senator Claire McCaskill is hitting the road this week, hosting town halls throughout Missouri. Today she was in Fulton, which is some pretty red territory for the Democrat. KOMU 8's Abby Breidenbach was there, and Abby, you said it got a little heated. That's right, I saw many nods of agreement, but also some wagging fingers at McCaskill today. People came out from both sides of party lines with big concerns regarding Justice Neil Gorsuch, airstrikes in Syria, and the EPA. Health care, however, seemed to be the hottest topic. Though she didn't originally plan to, one woman said she just had to stand up about women's health issues with her stance against birth control and abortion. One reason that she voted against Justice Gorsuch was because he wouldn't stand up for the little guy. Well, the little guy in this case is the unborn child. That is someone who needs a voice, and the only people that can give him or her a voice are people like you and me. Schrader stood nearly surrounded by signs reading, I stand by Planned Parenthood. McCaskill said she respected the woman's opinion, but she believes the best way to prevent more abortions is to get women access to birth control. Reporting. A new study on the Boone County Jail's inmate population suggests a change is needed. Former Judge Gary Oxenhandler presented the study to Boone County Commissioners. It looks at other ways to punish inmates besides jail time. Oxenhandler doesn't believe a jail expansion is needed. He says there are other ways to deal with non-threatening inmates. I mean, there's lots of ways of dealing with people there. They would be under the auspices of adult court services or in some instances under probation and parole that we have all sorts of electronic equipment, bracelets and anklets that people can wear. We can keep them from places. We can make sure they stay in places. Oxen handlers suggest using an auditor and a consultant to review the inmate population. Budgeters in the Missouri House and Senate want to spend an extra $100,000 on the state's Amber Alert system. A plan was locked into place today to expand the alert for missing children. Part of the plan includes an additional alert for people killing or seriously injuring police officers. It was warmer out today with a little bit of cloud cover later on. Let's see if that trend will continue the rest of the week with Megan. Thank you, Brittany. Temperatures are still mild out this evening with some temperatures in the 70s, others in the upper 60s right now. Winds are pretty light out of the southeast at 8 miles per hour. Tomorrow at sunrise, we can expect temperatures at 56 degrees by midday, 74. Afternoon high temperature of 79. Very warm, warm weather to continue along with the chance of rain. I will break that all down in the full forecast after the break. Megan, thank you very much. The Columbia Regional Airport hopes to expand and passenger counts released this week show the efforts are working. KOMU 8's Ben Burke is live at the airport with a look at those numbers. 
It's expected that more and more people will be going in and out of these doors once United Airlines opens up service to and from Columbia Regional later in August. And that's after what the city is calling record-setting numbers of airport traffic right now. Now let's take a look at those numbers from the first quarter of 2016 and 2017. The numbers show a 24% increase in overall traffic from 2016 to 2017. Airport manager Mike Park says one of the biggest factors in the increased traffic is larger airplanes coming in from Dallas. They went from uh, the smaller aircraft, they went to a CRJ-900, which is the 76-passenger aircraft. So we have more capacity. It's Columbia businesses for their support of Columbia Regional. The new United flights to and from Denver will take off for the first time August 1st. Reporting live in Columbia, Ben Burke, KOMU 8 News. For Uber and Lyft users, a Senate-approved bill could increase safety for your next ride. The bill now awaits approval in the House. If passed, the bill would require driver background checks, vehicle inspections, a non-discrimination policy, and a yearly $5,000 licensing fee for the companies. Representative Kirk Matthews, who initially sponsored the bill when it debuted in the House, says another regulation in the bill would protect the passenger in an unfortunate situation. They have to maintain personal insurance, but in addition to that, this requires the TNC to maintain a million dollars worth of liability insurance whenever there's a, a rider in the car. Uber currently operates in Kansas City, St. Louis, Springfield, and Columbia. If passed, drivers could work throughout the state. Matthews says Governor Greitens supports the bill, which he anticipates will pass this session. Today, the Missouri House voted against a proposal to raise gas taxes by about six cents a gallon. The additional money would fund improvements to aging roads and bridges. Missouri has the seventh largest road system in the country, but ranks 47th in revenue per mile. Coming up, how a breakthrough in mid-Missouri laser technology could help save some money. Plus, a new era in Missouri basketball set to start, and it's on paper.